Hi there, it's Gabriel here from pilotclimb.com and in today's video we're going to talk about the distance measuring equipment, also called DME. By the end of this video you're going to know what is a DME, how does a DME work and how do we use it during flight operations. So without further ado, let's dive into it. What is a DME? As you can see from the picture, this is a screenshot of an aircraft instrumentation, an aircraft DME basically. The DME, as you can see here, can give us information about the uh, distance from a selected ground station and uh, ground speed or, or the speed at which we are approaching, at which we are approaching the ground selected station. So this is a very basic one in some other more complicated aircraft we've got the, a little bit more uh, elaborated DME information, but that's all you need. You need just the distances from the, the station and the speed at which you are approaching the station. Okay, so how does the DME work? So we need to know the frequency of the DME because each DME has got an associated frequency that is super important we, we take care one when selecting the frequency because you can imagine if you select the wrong frequency of the wrong DME, then we're gonna have information about the distance of the wrong DME. So normally the DMEs are located uh, very close, are co-located with the airport. So if you selected the DME of the airport that you are uh, that you are going to to your destination, you will know the distance information, how far you are from the airport. So if you select the wrong DME, you can imagine that you're gonna know the information about the uh, distance from or to the the wrong airport or the wrong DME ground station. So if uh, I can, we can do a parallel, let's say that we didn't have each of us a, a different phone number, okay? So if you don't select a frequency for DME, you will ne it, it never works. In the same way that if you don't put the, if you don't dial the number of uh, the person that you want to talk to by the phone, you will never call the person. So it's not enough to press the green button and talk to them, but you need actually to put a phone number. In the same way, you need to put a frequency in order to get the distance information to or from the uh, ground station that you want. The DME system works in this way. The aircraft sends an interrogation to the ground uh, DME station and the ground DME station will send back a reply to the aircraft. The aircraft also know that for each second of time elapsed between the interrogation and the reply correspond an exact uh, unit of distance. So let's say that for each second of uh, delay between the interrogation and the reply equals one nautical miles and let's say that the aircraft send the, the interrogation and then get back the reply after 10 seconds and in this case if one second is equal to one nautical miles we can say that the aircraft is 10 miles away. I just made up this number so don't take them as real but I, my goal is to send you the information and to send you the message. So I hope it's clear and we can move on. So the HDMI has got these DME reading errors. So as you can see here from the picture on the left the DME sends the interrogation, as we said, to the DME station and then sends back, the DME station sends back the reply to the aircraft. The aircraft knows for each unit of time correspond a unit of distance, so if the, the time elapsed between the interrogation and the response is 10 seconds, as we said before, and for each second means that the aircraft is one mile far away, that means that it's 10 miles away. But as you can see from the picture, this is an oblique, an oblique interrogation. That means that it's not like the same thing of ground distance. So as you can imagine here uh, is that because the aircraft sends the, the interrogation from its position and get back the reply to its position, this is an oblique distance reading. So that's also called slant distance. And the slant distance is the distances that the pilot reads in the flight deck, which is not e uh, equal to the ground distance. It's normally a bigger a longer distance. So what is the problem? There is not a big deal because this difference uh, is very very little especially if you are not fly if you are fly low and we are far away but let's say we are fly very high okay and we are getting closer to the station then this error can uh, it becomes bigger basically okay so and that next error is basically a consequence of this system because it always sends the interrogation from his position and re uh, get the reply to his position, which is a kind of an air distance. Okay, it's not a ground distance, but air distance. The air distance or slant distance is equal to ground distance if the air the airplane will have been on the ground. But the airplane, since the airplane is is is, the, is not on the ground, it's going to receive this oblique distance called also slant distance. So 
If we move to the next one and we imagine that this airplane is flying actually at 10,000 feet, okay, once, which is uh, 10,000 feet is uh, roughly 1.6 nautical miles, what happened is that the aircraft will fly in a straight line at 10,000 feet and we overfly the station at 10,000 feet, like in this case. What will happen is that the ground distance between the airplane and the DME is zero because the airplane, as you can see, is right above the DME, but the air distance is equal to the height of the airplane to the, 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 the height of the airplane uh, from the DME station. So in this case, since the airplane altitude is 10,000 feet, which is roughly 1.6 nautical miles, when the airplane is above the DME distance, it, the pilot will, all, will read 1.6 nautical miles distance because this is the distance that the pilot gets, okay? It doesn't get the ground distance, but he actually gets the distance from the airplane to the DME station. So if the aircraft would have been here, for example, it's gonna get this distance. Here is this distance. So in this case, he overflies the DME at 10,000 feet, which is roughly 1.6 nautical miles. So the pilot will uh, read in his D, uh, DME 1.6 nautical miles, even though the actual ground distance is zero nautical miles because it's right above the uh, station. So this is an error that you have to think when we are waiting for a DME before and then after we have to make a tar because if we wait to see zero on our DME indicator, probably we will never, we will never get. We will pr most probably get, let's say in this case, when the aircraft is here 1.6, over the station one point, sorry, when the aircraft is here 1.7, then over the station 1.6, which is 8, is, is basically altitude over the DME, then again 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2 miles, and so on. So the pilot that will wait for zero, he will never see zero in his uh, DME uh, instrumentation. Okay, I hope this message is clear so we can move on to the next slide. So also, the DME has got some limitation. So the D stands measuring equipment as a maximum range. What I mean by that is that we don't have, uh, we have to make sure that it's clear that in order to uh, take the signal for a DME, we need to be close enough. How much is close enough? Well, depending on many, on many factors. One of the most important factors, of course, is the distance of the airplane and the altitude of the airplane. Because the higher the airplane, the bigger is the range that we, sooner we can get the information from the DME. But also we've got other factors such as weather, as uh, night and day, as the, uh, another factor is the orography of the terrain. If the DME is in a mountain area, then the, uh, the range is, is, empired, is empired a lot. So the range is low, is, is smaller. So we need to get closer before we can actually read the DME distance information from the DME that we want. So there is a formula that gives us a rough number about the uh, range of our DME. So as you can see here is, is 1.23 multiplied by the square root of the airplane 8 above the DME ground station. So let's say like in the example before, let me see if I found it, here we go. So the airplane, the airplane is flying at 10,000 feet. So if we take this number 10,000 feet, okay, and uh, if we take 10,000 feet, and we do the calculation, it's gonna be 1.23 multiplied by the square root of 10,000. So I've done this calculation, which is roughly 100, 123 nautical miles. So we know that at 10,000 feet over the DME station, we will start to read the information about the distance of the, that DME 123 nautical miles before. Again, this is an approximate number that we need to take with the, not as an exact number, but it's a rough, it's a, it can give us an idea that if you are 600 miles away from the DME station, we, we, we will not get the information from the DME station that we want. However, we need, that's why it's important to know a rough number because if we select the frequency too far away, we might get the information about another DME that's completely off of our route and, then it, and that's when confusion starts to arise because if you think that you are taking the information from your DME, from the DME that you are interested in, but you're taking information about another DME, then some confusion will rise because you think you maybe you're approaching, but then maybe the DME station is behind you and you're actually going away from, okay? So that's, it's very important to have an idea where you can start getting the right information. So this basically finished this video about uh, an overview of the DME. In the next videos, we're going to talk about the actual DME operations. Saying all this and understood what is a DME, how it works, and uh, uh, 
why it's important in the next videos we're gonna actually talk about how we apply DME in the AD operations, where we found the information about the frequencies and what are the DME arcs and why are they so important. So if you like the video give it a like, if you, if you subscribe to the channel you got notified every time I put a new video, I'm gonna put one video per day about training content and if you go to pilotclimb.com as you can see here you can subscribe to get free pilot training content. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.